in the previous sessions we have studied about submerged arc welding process as well as shielded metal arc welding process in case of submerged arc welding process the weld zone is pro protected by a flux in case of shielded metal arc welding process the weld zone is protected by a gas which is formed due to burnout of flux coating on the electrodes in this process that is gas shielded arc welding process a gas exclusively used for protecting the weld zone from the atmosphere the gases used are inert gases these are the inert gases which will not combine with any other elements there are two types of gas shielded arc welding process one is metal inert gas welding popularly called as mig welding and second one is called as tungsten inert gas welding process let us understand how this two process work tungsten inert gas welding is an example of gas shielded welding process similar to metal inert gas welding process in this process it makes use of non consumable uncoated tungsten electrodes since non consumable tungsten electrode is used a separate filler material has to be added in this process this process is also known as gas tungsten arc welding process and is referred as tig or gtaw process it makes use of non consumable uncoated tungsten electrodes coating of flux is not necessary in this process because the shielding gas will form a protective cover on this well zone tungsten also has very high melting point of up to 3500 degrees celsius so the tungsten electrodes will never get consumed a separate filler rod will be used to fill the gap between the two metal pieces the shielding gas in this process will be protecting the well pool the shielding gas can be argon or helium the argon is widely used as it is heavier than air unlike mig process in this process it uses dc power supply with straight polarity it means that the electrode will be connected to a negative terminal as well as the workpiece will be connected to the positive terminal since the electrode is connected to negative terminal there will be more amount of current which will be flowing into the workpiece let us see the various components used in this process the major components are the weld torch the filler rod the power source and the gas cylinder which will be supplying the inert gas to the well zone the operation and working of tig process is similar to any other welding process before starting this welding first the operator has to clean the job to remove the contaminations like grease dirt on the workpiece later the power connections as well as the supply of inert gas has to be switched on now the arc is made to stuck between the electrode and the workpiece and to maintain a constant arc a gap of 2 to 4 mm has to be maintained continuously by the welder the filler metal is inserted manually between the work plates the arc melts the workpiece along with the filler metal so that the filler rod the filler molten filler metal will flow into the gap between the metal plates simultaneously the inert gas will cover the molten pool thus protecting the entire well zone from the atmospheric contaminations what is tig welding TIG stands for Tungsten Inert Gas Welding. 
The American Welding Society calls this process gas tungsten arc welding, or GTAW. You might also hear it called Healy arc welding. TIG welding uses a tungsten electrode, and tungsten has an extremely high melting point. When you TIG weld, the electrode gets hot, but it doesn't melt. We say that it's a non-consumable electrode. That doesn't mean it lasts forever. That just means that it doesn't melt and become part of the weld. You see, in a lot of other welding processes, the electrode melts and becomes filler metal. Those are consumable electrode processes. So here's the tungsten electrode being held in a TIG torch. The electrode slips into a collet, and the collet tightens up against the collet body. You can adjust the length that the electrode sticks out of the holder by loosening up the end cap. When you tighten the end cap, the collet clamps down on the electrode. TIG works by melting the base metal, and that is, the metal that makes up the two pieces that are to be joined. The heat is generated by an electric arc that forms between the base metal and the tungsten electrode. You can control the amount of heat with a foot pedal or with a thumb wheel on the torch. For most metals, the current is direct current, or DC. DC is like the current flowing from a car battery. One wire is always the negative and one is always the positive. In DC TIG welding, the electrode is usually negative and the workpiece is positive. The term DCEN is used for this, indicating that the current is DC and the electrode is negative. This is also called straight polarity, but DCEN is a more descriptive term. DCEN puts most of the heat on the workpiece, and it's the most common setup. When welding aluminum, however, AC is used. In AC, the positive and negative voltages switch back and forth between the electrode and the workpiece. Now, this puts more heat on the electrode, but it has a cleaning effect on the workpiece. You see aluminum forms oxides that float to the top of the weld pool and prevent a good weld. AC current helps control these oxides. In an electric circuit, the current flows in a loop. In TIG welding, the current has to flow in a complete circle from the machine to the torch, into the work, and back to the machine. A work lead is clamped to the work to complete the circuit from the workpiece back to the machine. Now you can TIG weld with or without filler metal, and that's not a choice you have in a lot of other processes. If you want to add filler metal to a TIG weld, use a filler rod, which is just a rod of metal with a specific alloy. You want to make sure that the filler metal you're using is compatible with the base metal and that it has the strength required to do the job. In TIG welding, the molten metal is protected by a shielding gas. This gas, usually argon and sometimes helium or other gases, keeps the molten metal from reacting with oxygen and water vapor in the atmosphere. This shielding gas is stored in high pressure cylinders like these. The pressure is reduced to a usable level by a device called a regulator. The shielding gas flows through a hose and comes out right at the point of the weld. So in summary, TIG welding is an electric arc welding process. It uses a non-consumable tungsten electrode. The filler metal is added separately in the form of filler rod. And the shielding gas comes from a high pressure cylinder. Let us now discuss various advantages and disadvantages of TIG process. This process produces wells of very high quality. Precision wells can be obtained in this process. That is one of the reasons why this process is widely used in aerospace industry. So there will be no slack formation in this pr process since flux is not used. And the concentration of heat will be in a very small zone and it will not spread over the entire workpiece. The disadvantages of this process is its very low welding rates. The process is slow compared to MIG process and the process is relatively expensive. This process expects a very high skilled operators because the operator has to hold the weld torch as well as the filler rod together. This process is very much widely used for micro welding and is not suitable for 
heavier sections. Let us now compare TAG process with MIG process. Both are gas shielded welding process, but few changes in their equipment makes few differences in the quality of the welds. MIG process makes use of consumable uncoated electrodes, whereas TAG process makes use of non consumable electrodes. The copper is widely used in MIG process and tungsten which is a non-consumable electrode is used in this process. The quality of weld of MIG process is less compared to TIG but the process is very faster in case of MIG welding process compared to TIG process. The power source used in MIG process is of reverse polarity where the electrode is connected to the positive terminal of a DC source. In case of TIG welding, the power source is straight polarity where the electrode is connected to negative terminal of DC source. The electrode will be in the form of wire in case of MIG welding, but in case of TIG process, the electrode will be a tungsten stick. Since MIG process makes use of consumable electrodes, Filler rods is not required, but in case of TAG process, it makes use of non consumable tungsten electrode. So it requires a additional filler metal to fill in between these two metal plates. In both the process, inert gases are used such as argon or helium to shield the well pool. These are the few differences between TAG process as well as MAG process. TAG process is widely used in case of micro wells as well as high precision wells whereas MIG welding is widely used for high production rates. Thank you for being here and watching this presentation. We'll meet in the next session with atomic hydrogen welding. Bye. Have a nice day.